that we can join together online to celebrate this Christmas, the world-changing wonder of Jesus coming as Saviour and Lord. We have a great mix of carols from across our churches, Elim people bringing Christmas Bible readings, some of our friends from around the world will bring their greetings, a special Christmas message from one of our national leaders and some surprise guests as well.
One of the most well-known and well-loved Christmas carols has famous people's fingerprints all over it. The lyrics are attributed to Charles Wesley and George Whitfield, two really well-known Christian leaders. And the music was originally taken from a, from a melody written by the famous composer Felix Mendelssohn. This is such a great carol, not only because it gives us the real meaning of Christmas, but it points to the real meaning of why Jesus came to the earth with that brilliant line in the last verse, risen with healing in his wings. It's so rousing that when you hear it, you can't help but stand and sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king.
Hi everybody, my name is Mark Greenwood and I absolutely love everything about Christmas. I do, all of it. Mm. Yeah. To be fair, when I say all of it, there's a few things I'm really not keen on. Sprouts. Sprouts? I mean, when I was younger, my mum used to mash them up and tell me it was cabbage. Can you imagine that? She said it was cabbage, like some kind of posh cabbage. But I ate sprouts. I really, really do. But apart from sprouts, I love absolutely everything about Christmas. I do. When I say everything, it's not quite true. Board games. I hate playing board games. I mean, like I sacrifice a lot. I really, really do for my family because they love board games. But I absolutely hate board games. I think they're appropriately named. Board, yeah, board games. I hate them. But apart from board games and sprouts, I love absolutely everything about Christmas. I d mm, that's not true either. Yeah, Christmas jumpers. I mean, what the heck? is Christmas jumpers about. But apart from sprouts, apart from board games, and apart from Christmas jumpers, I love absolutely everything about Christmas. Hello, we're Andrew and James Reeve, and we're based on the island of Curon here in the Philippines. Christmas starts here on the 1st of September, when people start decorating their homes and playing Christmas music. And then on Christmas Eve, the family will have a special time together and they will have uh, spaghetti or pancit noodles and exchange gifts. And then on Christmas Day, the extended family will all have a bring and share meal. And then the children will go and visit their godparents to receive a blessing and a gift from them. Um, godparents play a really important role in the children's lives here in the Philippines. What Christmas means to us is legitimately having chocolate for breakfast, but more seriously, um, it's about celebrating with family the, um, the amazing gift that God gave us of Jesus. Um, this year we'll be celebrating over Zoom, so, um, but we'd like to wish you a really happy Christmas. Yeah. Maligayan Pasco. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born, a prophet called Isaiah spoke about what would happen. Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called a Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end.
happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be your glory. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come, let us adore. presidente das igrejas ali no Brasil e é um prazer estar falando com vocês nós aqui do Brasil é, temos uma cultura muito gostosa na questão de estarmos celebrando juntos o Natal as famílias elas se reúnem é, para estar é, festejando essa data tão importante e Natal para nós é Jesus é, então todas as famílias, mesmo aquelas que não frequentam uma igreja especificamente, também celebram o nascimento de Jesus. Então eu quero deixar aqui um Feliz Natal para vocês, desejar a vocês que é, sejam abençoados nessa data. É, todas as nossas igrejas Elim no Brasil e no mundo. Deus abençoe a todos vocês que são membros e colaboradores deste ministério abençoado. Feliz Natal a todos. The second prophecy about Jesus reads like this from Isaiah 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. I'm stood outside the Christmas shop in Stratford upon Avon. Yeah, that's right. Here, it's Christmas all year round. I mean, imagine that. See me, mate? Anyway, imagine that Christmas all year round. The problem of Christmas, of course, apart from the board games and the sprouts and the Christmas jumpers, is I just eat too much. I eat way too much food. Did you know the average family will spend £1,000, that's right, £1,000 on food at Christmas? I mean, that's just crazy. The average Christmas meal, that whole kind of pudding and dessert and starter and drinks and nuts and all that stuff, the average is £7,000 thousand calories and the average person will put on seven pounds in weight at Christmas. Good to know you're above average isn't it? <laughs> it really is but you know what the beauty and the truth and the thing we need to remember at Christmas is it's not about putting on weight it's about losing what weighs you down. I'm sure this year you felt a bit weighed down the message of Christmas has something for you because Jesus came into this world to lift all our cares, lift all our concerns and to bring peace into our lives. In fact, there's this great little sentence in the Bible that says cast, that literally means throw all your cares on him because, do you know what? He cares for you. Silent night 
holy night All is calm, all is bright I'm your virgin mother and child Holy infant so tender and mild Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 and 7 to 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and find out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Now we have been through the harvest 
winter's truly begun Now we have walked in the chill of the night We are waiting for, waiting for For the Savior's day Many have come from the valleys Many have come from the hills Many have started their journey home To be with someone, with someone On the Savior's day the Savior's day Joining the old and the young ones Joining the black and the white Meeting the need of the hungry is he Will we ever remember him On the Savior's day Savior's day hey, yeah. Here's to the God of the present Here's to the God of the past Here's to the hope and the future He brings We will sing to Him, sing to Him On the Savior's day Open your eyes on the Savior's day Don't look back or turn Savior's Day Raise up your glasses and drink to the King Raise up your glasses and drink to the King Raise up your glasses and drink to the King We have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plain And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains Glory Glory and 
This is a reading from Luke chapter 1, and it says this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. 
Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Hi there, I'm Shero. I'm Nofi. And we live in Indonesia, East Java in Indonesia. Um, it's a Muslim country, so Christmas for us isn't celebrated as widely as it is in the Western world. It's only amongst the churches, amongst Christians that Christmas is celebrated. It's a smaller event, but we run a children's home and so Christmas is a big deal for us. We try to every year have at least one gift for the children and we have a big party, a big celebration and we have a big service just to remember what the real meaning of Christmas is. So Christmas for me is all about family coming together as a time of celebration, remembering the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the greatest gift that was ever given to mankind. And also Christmas reminds us of the greatest love and grace man has ever known. Yeah. So we would just like to say to you, Merry Christmas! Selamat Hari Natal! The bells start jingling. Mariah starts singling. Cinnamon and pine aromas calls us to remember. Families get tinseling, excitement tingling. For goodness sake, it's only November. Because in the 11th month the ballads begin. Catchy Christmas choruses cling to you and your kin. Top to toe in tailbacks, the boys of the NYPD choir. Chestnuts roasting, by now surely burning, on an open fire. Shaking Stevens, Wham, Bing Crosby, Band-Aid, Buble, Slade. Wizard, do you really wish it could be Christmas every day? Think of all the shop assistants, six weeks of it to get through. As Bono said, tonight, thank God it's them instead of you. But above and around, beneath and beyond the modern Christmas ditty is a deeper song, eternity long, a melody of old, hear it unfold, the greatest story ever told. A hurting world, an angel's promise, a family scandal, a husband's fright, in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light. Where infinite influence, omnipotence suppressed, the word becomes flesh in diapers dressed, the fabled stable becomes a crash and blessed. As majestic God assumes mortal guise, lo, within the manger lies he who built the starry skies. See, the real song of Christmas is more than just a carol. It's an anthem of atonement, a refrain of redemption. In our anguish, heaven smiled. The song's composer becomes a child. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. But the peril, the danger of away in a manger is it can make our Christmas story stranger and rearrange her from the game changer, the heaven hell exchanger she is. Because the destiny of the Christmas baby was to die. But in our lieu, from fairy tale birth to criminal's cross, tonight, thank God, it's him instead of you. So in the musical sweatshirts, the John Lewis adverts, listen, remember the song. In the activity, remember the nativity, your pain and shame undone. For to you a son is given, over you a song is sung. But don't just remember, respond and surrender. For Christ the Saviour is born.
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on those to whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Hello, my name is uh, Pastor Aaron Chan. I'm from London, the Chinese, uh, Elim Chinese Church. Uh, Christmas to us is really important, especially Christian, because the, the, uh, we used to come from a, a pagan background. We, we, we never used to celebrate Christmas. But after we became Christian, Christmas is, means so much to us. Every year, we, uh, we have party in the church, and we have games, and we have wonderful time together. Unfortunately, this year, we, because of lockdown, we're not allowed to uh, mix because of social distancing. So what we're going to do this Christmas, we're going to have a live concert. So everybody can join in to watch uh, the, 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 the concert together. And also in, the, in, the, in one of the church meetings, we're going to uh, have games. Despite there's a, there's a social distancing, but we will try to find a way how to play games without coming close together. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be wonderful. So we cannot allow the pandemic to, to, to stop us from celebrating Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Sing Dan Kwai Lok. Sing Dan Fai Lok. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the things I really do love about Christmas, and I think I'm going to appreciate it even more this year as we've had this crazy global pandemic, is just stopping and being with those that I love. And do you know what? I'm proper going to go for it. I'm going to have some right good food at Christmas time. I really, really am. I'm going to drink some schlur. It's going to be fantastic. But I do love that about Christmas. I love remembering to spend time with those that I really, really appreciate. But I also love remembering what Christmas is really, really all about and that for me is what's really exciting uh, behind me is the birthplace of William Shakespeare I'm in Stratford upon Avon that is famous for the birth of this amazing person that people from all over the world have heard about and they come to Stratford and they take photographs and they enjoy finding the actual place where William Shakespeare was it's an amazing atmosphere around here when you start to see all the Stratford stuff and the William Shakespeare stuff. But you know what? Christmas I really love is remembering that Jesus Christ really was born. He did turn up. I'm remembering the most famous birthplace that we sing in the carols and we remember that Jesus came to our world and people from all over the world and especially at this time of year begin to think a little bit more about the birth of Jesus, the most famous person who did some of the most famous writings that had incredible impact on our world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, 
but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, 
throughout this carol service we've sung some carols and uh, heard some readings read which all talk about the truth and the reality of what Christmas is really really all about. Our friend Kojo read to us from probably one of the slightly lesser known Christmas readings but he introduced us to the fact that to us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders. That's talking about how when Jesus was born the whole of authority rests upon him. And then it goes on to say and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a thought. Do you ever need somebody to listen to who understands what make counsellors really effective is when they've been through stuff so when you share your stuff with them they understand Jesus is the wonderful counsellor he's he's been through stuff he hasn't remained distant or disconnected from earth that's what Christmas was all about it was about God saying I don't want to stay distant I want to turn up let Jesus be close to you this Christmas because he's the wonderful counsellor. He's the mighty God. That means he's powerful and he's able to do so much. I don't know what you're facing in your life right now. I don't know what challenges or pressures or sadnesses you have this Christmas time. But when Jesus came to earth, he came as a mighty God. That's right. This little baby was mighty God rocking up into our world. There's not nothing too big that he can't handle but here's the beauty there's nothing too small that he's not interested in whatever you're facing in your life right now you can call out to God and say God I need you and of course the, the reason Jesus came was not just to deal with those kind of physical challenges but actually there's a spiritual issue as well you see every one of us have done our own thing and left God out but here's the beauty, there's nothing that you have done that Jesus can't or won't forgive. Whether it's big or small, he wants to forgive you and he's well able to do that. To show just how mighty he was, that baby Jesus grew up and he was stuck on a cross. And as he was dying on a cross, he took the punishment for the wrong of the whole world and he came back alive, you see. For Christians, you can't really understand the truth of Christmas unless you understand the truth of Easter, that Jesus Christ came to take the punishment for the wrong of the whole world. He's a truly mighty God. But then also he's a Prince of Peace. Do you need peace in your life right now? I guess around our world we could all do with a little bit of peace coronavirus has wreaked havoc across our world and it's probably impacted your life and here's the beauty that whatever is going on outside it's possible to feel peaceful inside but it's only possible when you allow Jesus to be a part of your life to allow him the prince of peace to bring peace to your life he's the prince of peace but then it tells us that he's also the everlasting father. I guess at Christmas time we often think about fathers that are not with us. We live in a fatherless world in, in so many, many ways. But I want to say to you that Jesus is the perfect father who knows how to treat you and will treat you right. He wants to become your father this Christmas. You know, when you're given presents, I don't, I don't know if you maybe fear the worst, like secret Santa presents. Gosh, what are, what are we going to get? And I don't know whether presents and gifts are going to be quite the same this year. But when you're given a gift, you can, you can do a number of things. You can, you can take it and say, oh, thank you, and open it immediately and say, oh, this is fantastic. And sometimes you're a bit disappointed with what you've got. Sometimes you're really pleased. I suppose you could say, oh, I'll open it later, maybe put it in the garage and open it at some point in time. Uh, and I guess if you're really, really sad, uh, you can say, do you know, I don't, I don't want that gift. This year, as in every year, the truth of Christmas from that first Christmas to right now is that God has given us a gift. 
and he's called Jesus. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Another little sentence in the Bible says that for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. So whoever believes in him will not die, but will have everlasting life. God is offering you a gift today. Will you accept it, reject it, or maybe just put it to one side? Just as I draw to a close in my uh, talk to you today, there are three ways that you can respond to God's offer of a gift. You can say a big yes and open up your heart to him this Christmas. To do that, you simply need to say, God, I, I know I've left and lived my life without you and left you out, but today I want you in my life. And saying yes to God is about inviting him in and with his help, turning away from living life without him and starting to live life his way. Asking him to forgive you for all the things that you've done wrong. You know, as I look at my life, there's things that I've done that I'm not happy about. And so it comes as no surprise to me that there are things that I've done that God's not happy about. And it would probably come as no surprise to you too. But the truth is, God may not be happy about those things, but he doesn't judge us or condemn us. He wants to forgive us. Why don't you, right now, where you are today, say a big yes to God. Say, God, I'm inviting you in. And my prayer for you is that as you do that, you'll realise that God has already said a big, massive yes to you. Uh, but another response you can have is you might feel that you're not really ready to say that big yes to God. May I encourage you to become what I call a little yes, which is, yeah, you're not ready to become a Christian, to start to follow Jesus. But this Christmas time, it would be an amazing decision if you decided to make an intentional decision to find out more. You see, if there's any possibility of the truth that Christmas is real, you want to look into it. Afford yourself the luxury of looking into it. It's too good to miss out on. Why don't you become a little yes? And you could say that even now in your own heart and mind. Say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to become a little yes. I'm going to really look into this Christianity stuff and find out whether this story, this narrative about Jesus really is all true. Oh, there's a third response. And if I might just gently challenge you today, you might be saying, I'm not, I'm not really ready to say that big yes to God or even that little yes. May I encourage you gently or challenge you gently to become what I call a healthy maybe. Many people say they're open-minded, but don't often kind of apply that to Christianity. May I encourage you to make a commitment today to at the very least become open-minded about the reality of Jesus and God and the Christian faith. And if you are open-minded, may I encourage you to remain open-minded, to make that commitment. You're not throwing everything in and investigating, but just keep it on your agenda a little bit more than once a year at Christmas. It's what I call a healthy maybe. Why? Because I want to encourage you to take your, maybe there's something in this. And don't let it dissipate, but just keep it on your agenda to make it a healthy maybe. I'm almost done. If you're a big yes, or a little yes, or a healthy maybe, we'd love to help you. And so if you're watching this today, you can message in the chat to the church that's hosting it. Or if you're watching it on the Elim YouTube channel or through some other means, then why don't you get in contact with us at elim.org. UK. Go to our website. There's a church locator on there. Send us a message and just say, I'm a big yes or a little yes or a healthy maybe. Let us know that you listen to one of the Christmas events and we would love to send you some information, maybe connect you with uh, another bunch of Jesus's followers if that's what you would like. But help us to help you this Christmas. God bless. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The saviour of humanity Unto us a child
Thank you.